It's impossible to write a good show about teenagers without addressing puberty in some way. We've seen Jenny go through crushes, we've seen her have temper tantrums, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. Today's episode is dedicated to Jenny's struggles through puberty. This episode will answer questions you didn't know that you had. I remember enjoying this episode, so we might as well dive right into it. It's a beautiful day in Tremerton, but that's never gotten in the way of a cluster invasion. These silly pawns don't pose a threat to Jenny, so she takes care of them immediately. This brings us to a moment many of you were probably waiting for. That's right, this episode has the first appearance of Queen Vexus, the leader of the cluster. She's the main antagonist of the show and a fan favorite character. What's not to love? She's evil, she's got a cool design, and she's got the unmistakable voice of Eartha Kitt. <laughs> so, you've dismantled a handful of my drones, but we are legion. One day soon, you will join us, and together, we will enslave the human race. He can't get rid of me that easily. Who does that ungrateful little worm think he is? Much like the ambassador robot from Doom with a View, Vexus is trying to convince Jenny to join forces with the Cluster so they can enslave the human race. This brings Jenny into a strange monologue about how she'll always be there to protect the human race. During my first viewing of My Life as a Teenage Robot, this was the moment I realized that I was going to run out of episodes eventually. The depression of that realization made this one of the most memorable scenes in the show for me. Jenny's monologue doesn't phase Vexus, and she remains convinced that she will eventually become a member of the Cluster. What do you think she'll do next? Fart all over Jenny? Yeah, kinda. Vexus proceeds to use the dimensional scissors from Star vs. the Forces of Evil and escapes. I'm pretty sure the writers included a joke where Jenny subtly calls Vexus a bitch, but I'll let you decide for yourself. <laughs> Turns out, Vexus's strategically placed fart included a tiny robot, which implants itself into her stomach. I think it's kind of cute how Nora stylized Jenny's insides. Nothing like a dangerous robot with grandma decals on its gears. Jenny cries in pain when the tiny robot chomps down on her stomach, but this doesn't make sense. As a robot, Jenny is unable to feel physical pain. This would be a complete nitpick, but in the same season, they made a separate episode all about how Jenny couldn't feel anything. For that reason, this episode gets a 0 out of 10. Absolutely terrible. How dare this cartoon contradict itself. Dang, this episode is jam-packed. Not only is it the first time we see Vexus, but it's also the first time that Jenny says crikey. I think that crikey was meant to be Jenny's catchphrase. She says it randomly throughout the show, but to my knowledge, there's never been an explanation for why she says this bizarre word. It's definitely not as iconic as Inspector Gadget saying, I'm always on duty, Sonic the Hedgehog saying, you're too slow, or Rick Sanchez saying, wubba lubba dub dub. It's still a really memorable phrase for fans of the show. At Tremerton High, Jenny and Brad are in class. Brad is interested in learning about the Cluster, but Jenny considers her fight against them to be run-of-the-mill and boring. My only battle today is between my urge to gorge on chocolate and my desire to be zit-free for the school photo tomorrow. Subtle. Yeah, Jenny has a bit of an acne attack. How can Jenny see her zit without a mirror? Seriously, try looking up past your eyebrows. It's not possible. Maybe this was one of the skills that Jenny picked up with her new eyes from See No Evil. I like that they decided to use bolts instead of actual zits. It suits Jenny much better than simple red dots. She screams and blasts off in embarrassment. They were in a classroom, so I wish we got to see her classmates react to the abrupt chaos Jenny caused. Even when Jenny removes the bolts, they just grow back even bigger. Defeated. Jenny lays on her bed and cries. The bolt is so gross looking, Tuck lets out a blood curdling scream. Nora knocks on the door for Jenny's daily system check, but Jenny doesn't even want one of the only people who could help her 
to see the state that she's in. Ugh, so temperamental. Why did I ever build a teenage robot? Yeah, Nora, why did you build a teenage robot? On that note, why did you build three baby robots and five other teenage robots? You're weird, man. Brad explains the concept of puberty to Jenny, theorizing that's what's happening to her. Tuck's theory is more accurate. Like, exactly accurate. At this point, we've all seen the boy who cried robot, so everyone did the reasonable thing and ignored him. Admitting to wearing makeup, Brad suggests that Jenny uses cover-up to hide her blemishes. This goes as you'd expect. Everyone laughs at Jenny's ridiculous state, causing a chain reaction of disasters. This is where Jenny's voice suddenly gets deeper. Well, Brad, thanks for making me look like a complete fool. They didn't get a different voice actor to fill in for Janice Kawaii for this scene. They simply pitch shift her audio to make it sound deeper. This effect was undone by Tyler Morlock, and while it's not perfect, this video gives you an idea of what Janice actually sounded like. My head forever, and it smells like fish tacos. Jenny pulls a Shia LaBeouf and puts a bag over her head, so nobody has to see how hideous she is. I like that the little robot is controlling Jenny's mood swings using a classic telephone patch panel. Very cool touch. She goes from optimistic to angry and back to overly dramatic and sad. Unlike our puberty, Jenny grows a gorilla forehead. She does get armpit hair, bigger arms, a bigger stomach, and... Uh -oh. Brad, you're a fiend. He even makes reference to the attractive girl he saw earlier, comparing Jenny to her in his head. Let's keep in mind that he basically watched Jenny turn into King Kong. Overnight, Jenny got even bigger and more monstrous. She looks closer to XJ8 than her former self. This transformation also seemed to make her a little dim-witted, so the accuracy is startling. Jenny wouldn't normally go to school in a state like this, but she went on her own initiative, even though it's photo day. She's in such a delusional state, she could only refer to Brad as friend, and the incredibly heavy robot falls on him. The faculty at the school forces Jenny to get her photo taken, triggering the activation of a murderous version of herself. How did this happen? Of course, the photographer was the master of disguise herself, Queen Vexus. Vexus has mind controlled Jenny, making her nothing more than a pet which will do anything she says. Vexus's order? Destroy the planet. Jenny starts doing exactly that. Jenny is so far from her normal self, she even attempts to kill Brad. Thank God Nora showed up at the school to stop this murder machine with Brad's little brother. Nora and Vexus clearly have some sort of history. Nora addresses her as if they've clashed many times before. This became my number one point of intrigue with the show. I wanted to know more about this conflict. The show eventually gives us some answers, so that's something to look forward to in future retrospective videos. Previous episodes established that Nora has good intentions and a heart of gold, so she tells Tuck to run past the murder robot to get to a panel box. She plans to short-circuit Jenny, but this is no easy task. Not even the words of her inventor could sway her. And the only thing that was able to make Jenny stop for a moment was the sound of Tuck screaming. This brought memories back to her, giving them a chance to short-circuit Jenny. And alien reference. It's kind of weird seeing Vexus holding Tuck without any visible intentions to hurt him. I feel like it's more in her character to rip him limb from limb, but that's just me. She does express intentions to enslave Tuck, but decides not to because Jenny threatens to destroy the robot that burrowed inside of her. Yeah, Vexus is a good mother. She would never do anything to harm her children. They may have destroyed the gym and nearly killed a couple students, but the faculty seems unfazed and lets Jenny get her picture anyways. Oops, Jenny has a huge hole in her chest. Ha ha ha, that's right. Fade to black. I mean, how else would you end this episode? Time for another sequence of fanbase poking holes in cartoon logic. 
Jenny was a threat to Tremerton High as soon as she became a student there. On her first day, she burned down the school. I think that they should have taken a Hulk attack a little more seriously. Nora didn't even come up with a way to stop this kind of thing from happening again. This wasn't the first time Jenny's body was put under control, and it won't be the last. Jenny's greatest weakness always ends up being herself, and that's why this episode works so well. The idea of making a teenage robot the main character of your show brings on a set of challenges. You need to be able to balance the teenage and the robot. This episode has an age-old teenager problem, and it also has a pretty awesome threat, which could only happen if the main character is a supernatural robot. This episode might make some people uncomfortable, it might make others angry. The fact that the episode made you feel strongly from either point of view means that it was well written. Did you like this episode as much as I did? Have you had any embarrassing moments during your teens? Tell us about it in the comments below. I've been your narrator, Andre. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video! If you enjoyed it, leave a rating. If you want to reach us, leave a comment. Or check out our other platforms. Links are in the description.